we're here with um, Joy and I, and then we have a special guest today. So I want to introduce her. Um, I'm Lindsay Pollard. And I'm Joy Martin. And this is Shaquilla Willie, and she is our special guest for today. And we're going to be interviewing her and talking about some really exciting things today. Our title today is called... Black Lives Matter. That's right. Black Lives Matter. Mm -hmm. So um, we're going to get going with this interview. All righty, all righty. Yeah, so one thing I just wanted to um, recap, since we're just starting Meet Me in the Middle, that um, in case you're wondering what's the purpose of Meet Me in the Middle, there, there are three basic things. is to give perspective, to give all of us perspective, um, us here and you there. Um, maybe stereotypes that you've had, or maybe, you know, you just people that are different that you don't understand and you kind of think a certain thing about that person or people group, um, we're open to break some of those down uh, at Meet Me in the Middle. Also, for those of you who are in the middle of a storm in life or, or just a hard time you're going through and it just seems to never end, we're, mm -hmm. our hope is to give you hope. Mm -hmm in the middle of your story, whatever that is. So many people talk about the before and after and the hallelujah, I'm done and delivered, but not a lot of people talk about that middle ground where you're just still aching and agonizing in prayer. So this is to give hope. And the other thing is um, that Lindsay brought up the other day that I think is so important is we want you to take a step forward. We want this to be a way forward. Take movements to meet other people in the middle, people that mm -hmm. don't look like you, didn't grow up like you, mm -hmm. or whatever their story is, or maybe you're wondering, you know, why they're in the middle of their storm or story or mess, and you kind of have a few judgments about that. Um, we want you to take steps forward to meet people in the middle and try to have a heart of compassion and understanding. Right? Yes. Amen. Absolutely. All right. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. In introduce a little bit of our guest and how you know her or something <laughs> okay <laughs> so, I'm, I'm trying to think back how many years have we known each other Ooh. at least what seven yeah we've known each About other for years. at least seven years yep. i met shaquilla um and my husband calls her quilasha <laughs> and uh <laughs> so she's affectionately known as quilasha in our family but i met shaquilla um through the library mm -hmm. at um, oscar, oscar mason, mason center and i think that our chemistry just clicked immediately yep. um, and I was asking her if she would do an interview for me because um, after we had talked and whatnot she shared some things about herself mm -hmm. and so I was really interested so I said hey let's do an interview and we can um, put this out for um, people in the neighborhood and the community so that they'll know some things about you so I think that's kind of how we yep it was the know. calendar it was a calendar, that's yeah. right. That's yeah, right. There that's you right. Go. That's right. right. Yeah. That yeah. Yeah. So she has, I mean, this is a phenomenal lady right here. She's got a lot of things going on in the community that she shares with the community to empower our young girls, um, just people with fitness. And there's a whole other story behind that that we'll get into a little bit later. Mm -hmm. um, but today, you know, we just wanted to talk about Black Lives Matter. I mean, it's a huge social issue. It's a huge social topic right now. And uh, so we thought, hey, we're going to step into some of the heavy boots mm -hmm. and we're going to march through this together because mm -hmm. we're all sisters in the Lord and we're right. all sisters. Okay. Right, like Joy right. said, sisters from a different mister. And that's, that's what we always it, that's refer it. to each other. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to, we're going to pose some questions to you yeah. as far as Black Lives Matter and, and um, tell us a little bit about yourself as far as you know, you're our mother, you have children. Yes, um, I am a mother, mother of two children. I have a daughter and a son, two lovely, lovely children. Mm -hmm. um, I am a director at a Boys and Girls Club. I also um, do a lot of community work. Mm -hmm. I work with teens and uh, teenage girls in a group called Omila. I've been doing that for 13 years. Wow. Um, I volunteer with different organizations. I have a fitness organization, Can't Stop, Won't Stop that I started in 2013, um, helping hundreds and hundreds of hundreds, hundreds of women um, get into fitness and taking care of yourself. Mm -hmm. um, I'm also an executive administrator for a single moms group. Um, wow. You name it, I do it. Wow. So wow. you got energy. <laughs> yeah. Now back up just a little bit. What yeah. does Omila mean? 
Um, OMILA stands for, um, it was the Oscar Mason Young Ladies Association. Okay. Mm -hmm. And now it is Outstanding Motivated Young Ladies Association. Ooh, oh, I didn't know yes. that. Okay. Okay. So it's a, it's a group um, for teen girls ages 12 to 16 uh -huh. Uh -huh. that um, just, I help them find their way, mm -hmm. a yeah. stepping stone, being yeah. that big sister, because yeah. mm -hmm. it's a hard world. So sure. I'm that big sister um, yeah. when they can't go talk to mom yeah. or dad. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a big sister group that I developed, and I've seen about uh, anywhere from two to 300 girls in the group. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, yeah. That's amazing. My oldest group so is um, off in college, well, graduated from college. Mm -hmm. Yep. So. Okay. okay. <laughs> this girl is my hero. She's yes. amazing yes. Uh, in so many ways, at so many levels. And part of the other, I guess, um, goal of Meet Me in the Middle is I just long for other people to know these beautiful people yes. that I know yes. and that are doing just some amazing things in our area. And um, so we're going to dive right in because we know a lot of people have short attention spans and, and we're going to dig deep fast. Um, let me tell you a little bit mm -hmm. to preface this first question though. Um, and then I want to talk some more about the Amala girls. So don't forget that because that's another thing I want to come back to. But um, just for myself, okay, I'm obviously a white girl and um, we, my family, I grew up in a, uh, a predominantly white church, white school, um, all of my social setting for the most part was 99.9% .9 white, okay? Mm -hmm. So um, I'm not dissing my family for that, I'm just telling you that's the reality of the way it was and um, I just didn't know any different and I didn't know that I didn't know, mm -hmm. you know? So there are things that I'm learning in the last really just seven years for the most part since I have moved here to Huntsville, Alabama that um, just have helped me to meet in the middle of a lot of stories and scenarios, especially this issue of race. So I'm going to tell you that from the get go because I'm going to ask her some questions that um, that are, you know, specific to her and to Shaquila and um, her story because it's different than mine. It's not, neither one of us are better than, it's just different. And we want to understand each other from uh, our different perspectives and bring some unity in that diversity, right? <laughs> okay. okay, so I'm gonna jump in real fast okay. with, um, you said you have two children. You have a, a boy and a girl. How old is your son? My son, he'll be 14 de in December, and okay. my daughter's 10. Okay, so let's talk about your boy. Mm -hmm. Because right now with the climate in America and raising black boys, mm -hmm. I'm just going to jump right into that mm -hmm. question, okay? So now when I, I have two boys and two girls, mm -hmm. they're all grown, um, and most of them have children of their own now. But... When I was raising my boys, it was like, you be nice, you be kind, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. I have a feeling there are certain things that you've had to teach your son that might be different from how I taught my son. Are there things? What is it like raising a black boy in the South, in, the, in this climate here, especially right now, with what's going on? Um, it is difficult raising any black child, okay. but definitely okay. more so boys. Okay. Um, one thing is I do have to tell him those things to be nice, mm -hmm. you know, um, dress a certain way, but yeah. I also have to tell him about his mannerism, right. the way he walks, okay. the way he wears his hair. Yeah. Um, he wants, he wanted to get his hair in these little twist things, uh -huh. but I didn't let him get it. Not because it didn't look cute on him, but because he would be labeled a certain way. Right. right so it's right. certain things he don't understand yeah, yeah. that, um, he don't understand it right now. Yeah why yeah. I do things the way I do it but it's difficult um, and I have to be a little hard on him yeah. um, even his hoodies yeah, I have to tell him to so wear his hoodies a certain way okay how do you tell him when you say a certain way be specific what is it if we're walking out to the car you can put your hoodie on but once we get in the car you need to take your hoodie off okay and why is that um, because I'm digging. We're, we put, we're <laughs> out and riding 
down the street with a hoodie on is suspicious. Okay. And so working in an area like this, um, you're, you're, you're profiled for this. Right, right. It, it seems suspicious to have on a hoodie in a car. Okay. And see, so, and see I'm not going to interrupt you too much. But no, I'm you're really, fine. You know, mm -hmm. But see, that's something I never mm -hmm. thought about mm -hmm. with my boys. Okay. Never thought about that. And, and I hate that. Yep. For you. Okay. Keep going. Now, why, what about the hair? Why do you, what's the deal with the hair? Um, because it's labeled a certain thing, like they have names for it in high school and stuff. Really? If you wear your hair a certain way. So what are some um, of the names? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, let's dig it. I'm going to be real, but one of them is thought, like thought hair, like thug hair and okay. stuff like that. Okay. So oh. even going to church, it's kind of like when he buys shoes. I say, get white shoes so you can wear it to church, you can wear it to school. Mm -hmm. It's um, kind of like his hair. It's maybe appropriate for school, but then you go right. to church, mm -hmm. it's a certain right. thing too. Right. Or if we go to a certain event with me, it's a certain look too. So uh -huh. with the hair, it's it's like the it's the popular hair now. So it's yeah. everybody looks the same. Okay. And mm -hmm. so I'm teaching him to be a little bit different and not yeah. follow the in crowd. Yeah. yeah. So um, even with his clothes, like he still wears his tees kind of short instead of the long tees and the baggy pants. Yeah, yeah. And I make him put a belt on with every single thing oh, because no. the sagging. And the showing your boxers. Yeah. So um, it's a lot I have to tell him to do and tucking yeah. things in, making it look neat, ironing yeah. his clothes. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. You know what's crazy is that hoodies mm -hmm. or jackets have been around forever with the hood on them. Mm -hmm. Right. And so now it's an issue. Well, it's funny. Black people did not create and invent hoodies, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> okay. As some people so. may think, <laughs> that is not how that happened, right? Yeah. I mean, so... But where did that become? So is it just because it, it just looks suspicious to policemen or to other people or? To both, um, to both people, uh, especially since the Trayvon Martin thing and okay, he had the hoodie okay. on. And yeah. so um, that raised up a whole bunch of stuff okay, with okay. that. So now we have the limit to when we wear the hoodies okay. and how we wear the hoodies and where we wear the hoodies. Okay. And so. So it's the stereotyping it's and a, the profiling that goes on with it. Exactly. Yeah. When you instantly walk in somewhere and you have a hoodie on, I mean, people flinch, literally. Okay, now tell me this. How does he respond to you telling him those things? And um, having he, to do those things? Um, being um, the child that he is, he doesn't mind. Okay. He questions me sometimes, but he, he doesn't mind. Okay. Um, he's, he's very understanding. Okay. And so he doesn't really, he doesn't question me as okay. much. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So what was my other question? Lindsay, you have one? <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, it's just interesting that, and you said what, what age is he again? He's, he'll be 14 in December. So it's, it's getting a little bit more difficult than it was right. when he was smaller. Because he's at that age, he's in that developmental stage now mm -hmm. where, you know, it's it's the peers, and mm -hmm. he wants to look like everybody, and right. you know, fit in. No right, kid at fourteen right. wants to stand out. You know, so does he? What kind of like pushback does he give you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, actually, he is the standout kid now. Okay. Um, he likes to do his own thing. Um, yeah. but he did have an incident at the Space and Rocket Center. Um, he yeah. went to the space camp and, um. A little kid, a little white boy told him, you know, Jamarian is one of those kids that if you tell him to do something, he's going to do it exactly like you tell him to do it. Right, right. You tell him to pick up one red M&M, mm -hmm. he's only going to get one red M&M. Uh -huh. You know, he's not like Morgan Morgan, like, oh, she didn't know. I got a green one too. <laughs> but he's that kid. And so when he went to space camp, he um, had an experience and, he, and, and the teams had to do certain things to get certain medals and so he, when it comes to co competition he's very competitive mm -hmm. and so he told the kid you need to get in line but so we can get the medal well the kid said who are you <gasps> why do you even exist oh <gasps> so you're just you're black you're stupid and we don't even know why you exist you gotta be kidding me um so right serious. here right now this just happened last year this happened two years ago oh, when he went to space camp and the camp leader called me mm -hmm. and he told me your son handled this situation better than I would have. Mm -hmm. Wow. And he commended Jamarian and I asked Jamarian, did he want to come home? Uh -huh. He said no. Mm -hmm. I asked them if they could move him out of the room with the little boy. They mm -hmm. said no. Oh, okay. So he had to stay there two more days 
And being that the space in Rocket Center was like right across five minutes from me, it felt like an eternity that I mm -hmm. couldn't right. get my child. Right. But he um, he doesn't really try to fit in. He even took that up. Like he really, he handled that very, very mm -hmm. well, but it hurt him. Sure. And so that's mm -hmm. when I have to start explaining to him, you're different. And not okay. because you're a boy, it's because you're black. Okay, okay. So I had to explain to him that he's different and sometimes some people don't understand. Right, right. You know, they don't understand, they don't mean it. And so with Jamarion, he doesn't really give me a lot of pushback mm -hmm. about things. Mm -hmm. Um which I, I really appreciate being that he's mm -hmm. a young black boy. Mm -hmm. Um he kind of he, he learned he has his own path. He mm -hmm. has his own mind. Mm -hmm. He's a different kid. He mm -hmm. won't buy a pair of shoes. Now the hair is different, but he won't buy a mm -hmm. pair of shoes because everybody got right, it. Right. He wants to be the different kid. Right, right, right. But he's very sensitive, so that situation kind of made him sad. Yeah. 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 So Absolutely. how can it not it, affect it made you? him very, very sad. Okay, and if I can just interject here um on behalf of some white people. Mm -hmm. Um, and I say this with the greatest of respect, but there I have heard some white people make comments like, well, racism doesn't exist anymore. Or that's not a thing mm -hmm. that people don't do that anymore. And you're telling me this happened two years ago mm -hmm. here. And I'm thinking, did that child learn that from his family or did it that was just his own thoughts I don't we don't know and so we can't know yeah all of the mm -hmm. heart reasons for that but it lets us know that these things are still there's still issues there's still major issues oh, yeah. in case you never oh, yeah. ever wondered you every know? day yeah. every single day and you know yeah. I just thought about something while you were saying it the thing mm -hmm. that Jamarian gives me pushback about is social media Okay. And I have to tell okay. him how to present himself on social mm -hmm. media because mm -hmm. if something happens to you, it's not that picture where you're smiling and right. you look great. It's right. that one bad picture that you post that will profile you for a yeah. lifetime. Yeah. And that's what they're going to use. Oh, yeah. And so I have to tell him to be careful on social right. media. Right. He was on Twitter before and I had to get him off of Twitter. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of limit him to mm -hmm. the social media activity. Right, right. And mm -hmm. Snapchatting. Because mm -hmm. that one snap, it may, you may think it lasts for 24 mm -hmm. hours, but you don't know who screen recorded what you snapped. Right. So, right. What's yeah. your biggest fear for him? Uh, my biggest fear for him is, of course, getting his heart broke. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and just being here without me. Mm -hmm. um, being here without me, I hope I can teach him as much as I need to teach him before I leave. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That he can, um, you know, be headstrong and be able to mm -hmm. tackle things because he's a tough cookie. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, I, I put him in as much as I can. He's in Boy Scouts. Um, mm -hmm. He does violin. Mm -hmm. um, he does musicals at school. He's playing basketball. Yeah. He goes to church camps. Mm -hmm. And so my biggest fear from him is just him really retaining everything that I've taught him right. so when I leave right. like that's my biggest fear like leaving him right yeah right. so that's kind of touchy but yeah you ain't going nowhere yeah. <laughs> we're not going to let we're you not go going yeah, so, anywhere but yeah, yeah that's 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 it and just being out like when he starts driving I'm not ready uh-uh mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not ready. ready for that I'm mm -hmm. not ready for high school he's starting yeah. high school next year and you know as a mother you know it's, it's a certain age when you can be really, really strict and a certain age when you got to kind of get to start coaching. Mm -hmm. So then yeah. I'm at that, you know, I had a friend and I told him, I was like, you need to talk to Jamarian. You need to yeah. talk to him. And he's yeah. like, nope, I don't. I need to talk to right. you. Right. Because mm -hmm. this is the stage where you become a real mom. Mm -hmm. yeah. I was like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is where I got to kind of push back, hey son. Yeah. You know, and, and kind of be able to... Mm -hmm. <laughs> To turn into coach a little bit. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Instead of hovering so, right. mother, you yeah. know, you turn into a little bit more of a coach. Yeah. So that's, this is another hard part mm -hmm. for me is listening to everything he says and breathing in, breathing out, yeah. and coming back to the conversation later. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Oh, just growing yeah. up. Mm -hmm. Just yeah. growing up and being a successful black person, um, black man. Um, that's one of my biggest. I just hope he just chooses the right path and keep mm -hmm. God first. But he's a great kid because I'm mm -hmm. telling you, I had a tough time the other day and he was in Birmingham at the Classic and 
He sent me a morning scripture. Oh, I was like Jesus. So oh, <laughs> you're teaching them well. Kudos. You're to really you. you're you you're are. a very very strong yes. woman and a strong mother and a good and mother. A yes. great very, mama. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So what would you say you need the most from? Well, what do you need from other people? From from your community, from your friends, um, from people out there. What do you need? Um, for my son? And specifically for this, yeah, to just be supportive to you. Just be supportive and be that old school village. You know, the village that when you walk down the street, mm -hmm. everybody looked out for you. Yeah. Yeah. Like if mm -hmm. you see my child, look out for him. Treat him like he would be your son. Right. Um, correct him when he's wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't mind it. I'm that type of mom. I miss the yeah. Madeas, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Well, I, I, yes. I miss the Madeas. I am yeah. not that parent. Like correct him yeah. because I know that's love. Chastise him. I know that's love. Yeah. Um, and so I believe in the village and yeah. for me it's just support all young people mm -hmm. right uh, mm -hmm. support all boys yeah. um, and just encourage them when you see them you know because mm -hmm. that's what kids need these days a little bit of encouragement and a listening ear because exactly. sometimes we don't listen to we always kind of push off what they have to, right. to say and what right. they think so right. Just listening. If you see my son, I just listen to him. Yeah. Because sometimes he expresses things to other people that yeah. he don't express to me. So. Yeah. yeah. What would you say, Lindsay? I mean, you you raised a a black son as yeah. well. So um, I'm just gonna throw it out to you, <laughs> sister. <laughs> you know, um, we try to surround our children with healthy role models because mm -hmm. we know that um, there there come times when your kids are not going to listen to you. Yep. And then they're going to listen to other people. Yep. And mm -hmm. so, you know, even though you get your feelings hurt, like, oh, you know, I'm chopped liver yep. now, but you've also put in place other people that they can go to, that mm -hmm. they can call, that, that can yeah. mentor them. Yeah. And so that's what we've tried to do with our children. And so, mm -hmm. um, like our son is 23. Um, he has voiced his fears and his concerns mm -hmm. regarding being stopped by the police. He's been stopped several times. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, he does the 10 and 2. Wait, how he, old is he? He's 23. 23. Okay. He's 23. And he's already been stopped several he's times. He's already been stopped several times okay. here in Huntsville. Okay. And, um, you know, uh, one time he was sitting at Taco Bell with his girlfriend and they were sitting there eating. Uh huh. And the police came and he got us on the cell phone, put us on speakerphone. He said, Mom and Dad, the police are approaching me. They're wondering why we're sitting here. And I told him, we're sitting here eating our food. Mm -hmm. And so he says, by the time, you know, it all came to a head, there were like four or five police officers surrounding them. And he says, I'm scared to death. Oh, gosh. And it ended well. Okay. Um, but they were saying, thank you, Jesus. It ended yeah. well. But they were saying, well, there's been robberies in this area because there's like a strip mall mm -hmm. around the Taco Bell area mm -hmm. off of the university. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so he says, oh, no, here's my driver's license. Here's my insurance. You know, this is my girlfriend. We're just sitting here here's eating. Here's our food. Here's our food. <laughs> so the officer kind of made a funny and said, well, enjoy your burrito and that yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> but but, it, but it was such a heightened level uh, of anxiety. Right. Whereas... When I was growing up, yeah. it wasn't like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't yeah, like that yeah. at all. I mean, police officers, I wanted to be a police officer. That's right, you did. You know, we talked about that That's in the last right. episode. I wanted to right. be a police officer. So, yeah. you know, and then we have great police officers out there. We yeah. have great first responders. Mm -hmm. But the climate has shifted. Mm -hmm. And so because the yes, climate has shifted, we, ha we have to pivot. Mm -hmm. And so how I would answer you is, you know, we've put people in place mm -hmm. to be a support system right, right. for our children for right. at the different stages they get to they yeah. have these people to reach out to yeah. Yeah. to and add that spiritual and, yeah. and just common sense support that's right. good because Jamario went to his first high school football game yeah. and he was like mom you know a lot of people uh -huh. and I guess what I reaped is so bad yes. and so my, he was like everybody came up you should quit son you should quit yeah. son what? And he looks just yes. like you. Yes. Like yes. yes. so you can't yes. deny that boy. <laughs> the handsome version. Yes. So the yes. village is there. I guess what I yes. poured into other people's oh, yeah. kids, they're giving back. Absolutely. So that's that's good. Having Absolutely. people mentors the and same way. And churches, I know, like yes. just you know, our church social, well, our social gatherings at church and mm -hmm. spiritual gatherings yeah. and. Well, and you were a librarian, mm -hmm. and so there's just a lot of people that you knew mm -hmm. through that, mm -hmm. and we had Bible study together. Yes. That's one place I met Shaklua for the yes. first time at a little library Bible study yeah. in our little neighborhood, and it just so 
oh, so impacted my it life. Was, yeah. You know, and we all became sisters and brothers mm -hmm. there, you mm -hmm. know, and I was the only white girl there. <laughs> <laughs> That's always my big joke. I'm the only white girl there. <laughs> It was so good, but anyways, yeah. All right, well, we're about to wrap it up, but I have to. I forgot to tell you all this. Okay, so the signature mm -hmm. thing is, let me see, get this in the middle. Right. When you when you get asked hard questions, you get to dip from the M and M bowl. So I think you Yay. get a few dips from the M and M bowl. For that. <laughs> we thought we'd just share that little fun with us. All right, you yes. want to close us out? All right. So you know this this was a. This was a deep topic. We, mm -hmm. we dove right in. Yeah. Uh, we appreciate the, the comments that you have given us, the insight that you have given us mm -hmm. firsthand, hearing mm -hmm. from an African-American mother, single parent, yeah. raising, um, you know, children, but not only just children, uh, almost, I mean, a teen boy, yeah. a teen yeah. young man. Yeah. And so, um, you know, as Joy stated before, we're trying to meet people in the middle of their life story, their mm -hmm. crisis, um, whatever's going on and so um, as Shaquilla stated earlier she wishes there were more Medeas around yeah so yes, that indeed. you know so that we could really have that true sense of community and I mm -hmm. think meeting in the middle for this particular topic is that we all need um, to experience equality yeah. we all need to experience um, that sense of community mm -hmm. and that sense of support to where we all feel mm -hmm. as if we can move forward together safely exactly so yes. that's a good point yeah. and I, I just mm -hmm. do have I, I have to interject too as far as um, the policemen and authority in our areas pray for them yes. I yes. mean pray for them it's not we're not here to throw everybody under the bus in that category no. and as i heard one day on a uh, priscilla shire that mm -hmm. you sent me mm -hmm. a um a message that priscilla shire had done um at a church recently and she shared a story about this woman who an african-american lady who had gone into a convenience store mm -hmm. and um after that lady in texas was shot correct mm -hmm. is that am i right mm -hmm. on the story mm -hmm. And um, she walked in the convenience store, there was a policeman in there, and they looked at each other, you know, and there were these glances, and, you know, she just kind of put her head down, and then at some point, he spoke to her in such great words, mm -hmm. and he said something like, it's hard being both of us right now, right. isn't mm -hmm. it? Um, and I love that, and he gave her a hug, and... There are great stories out there, um, and we just pray for our yes. authorities here. And there's still are those other stories that we all know that have gone mm -hmm. sideways in a real bad way. Yeah. And I ache and hurt for those. Yeah. But another place of meeting in the middle is praying for these yes. guys and yes. these Absolutely. women on the force, right? Yes, Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. And doing things like this, just keep putting these stories out there in a way that like so people can just have perspective and say all stories are not equal right but we want to be treated all right. 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 right so let's remember this next week when mm. you go by someone when you interface with someone try to meet them in the middle and we'll see you next time see you next time thank you you're welcome